Hi guys, welcome back, uh, or welcome, uh, if you've never seen one of my videos before, uh, I mostly do um, painting and weathering, finishing up a model, talking about how it was to build, but not showing the complete build, um, and uh, dioramas, and this is to go with the Cromwell tank that I built recently. Uh, I wanted to do a short diorama, quick diorama, using some DAS um, air drying clay to do a cobbled road. So I didn't want to do use a ruler and a scribe and start drawing cobbles on. And I certainly didn't want to start cutting, pre-cutting cobbles, letting them dry and then assembling them. Uh, whilst that might have been more realistic, um, I decided to use some wire sheet that I'd bought um, like a mesh that I'd bought off eBay um, as part of a set and I never needed this big wide uh, scale mesh I bought I bought the set for the smaller scale ones which I've used in 135 tanks as like vents uh, and grills uh, so this one's kind of useless to me really um, but it just so happened it was kind of like the size of a cobble or a tile at that scale. So I just used it to print uh, a stencil onto the clay and it was super simple. Um, I'm sure you could find any number of things to do something similar with. Uh, the first imprint wasn't as uh, deep as it could have been so I had to go back over it a couple of times. Um, and I even used a scribe then uh, in places just to um, deepen the uh, deepen the grooves. Just to go back to the Cromwell tank, um, I'd put a load of kind of bits and bats on to make it quite realistic, to make it look like it had been through the wars. And somebody had mentioned in a comment about putting a couple of sandbags on it. Um, and since I had some leftover clay from the uh, cobbled road, uh, I did end up doing that. That was a good suggestion. Um, I just PVA'd them onto the onto the tank. I didn't shape them to the tank's body, which I normally would do, but then you get little chips of clay all over the all over the finished tank. That's a bit of a pain. So I just um, made sandbag shapes um, just on the diorama base and left them to dry for a couple of days with the um, with the diorama so that's key guys don't start don't get impatient and start working on the uh, on the cobbled on the road and on the details until the clay is completely dry you can see there underneath that I've painted it black and then I've painted it lightly over the top with grey. Um, that's just my base um, because my plan is to just have a couple of uh, different shades in there, um, some cobbles that are a different colour, uh, just to give it a bit more interest. But yeah, just showing you that I'm updating the tank a little bit there. I really enjoyed that build. If you've not seen that video, guys, go back and watch it because uh, the Airfix Cromwell is, is lovely. Um, really enjoyed that build. And I put the added extras on that are not in the instructions, like you can see there, the, um, the hedge, the hedge cutter on the front. So like I said, um, jump ahead here and I have painted some of the, um, cobbles a different colour just for a bit of interest. The building is super simple, just a piece of balsa wood. I cut four windows out of it. And then I've used some little strips of balsa just to make a bit of bit of detail on it but not a lot. Um just some window frames and um like a, a skirting along the bottom. Uh, like a thicker wall. Uh, around the base of it but um, for people who, who buy stuff 
by after you know third party kind of details and little kind of diorama um, bits, uh, pylons and window frames and window leading and pavements and curbs. You know you can go go to town on it, but um, I wanted to have some dirt and some rubble at the base of this building. And that's how I was planning on ending the um, the road, like finishing the boundary line of the road. So yeah, it's just going to be rubble hiding the, uh, the 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 bits, the rougher bits. Do my usual mix with coffee grounds. Just because I had it, it was in the morning actually, and I had the pot there, as you can see. Um, it gives it a bit of colour and um, a bit of texture. And I've raised the balsa building up on some little pieces of foam board, just to represent where the pavement would be below the rubble, so the building wouldn't be on the same um level as the road as the cobbled road it'd be higher than it and um none of it's stuck together yet because i'm going to use the actual uh casting plaster to stick everything together I don't know if this way of, of doing it is the best way. Um, I suppose you could do the the stencil, the wire mesh the way I've done it and push it all the way through the clay and then make individual cobbles that are all the same size and then recreate it by piecing them together with PVA glue. But um, obviously that'd be more time consuming, but maybe more realistic. Um, I don't know what you think guys, um, I know you can buy bricks and individual cobbles and I know you can buy um, like a pre-made surface that looks like a, a cobbled road. Obviously while the um, plaster dries that building will need to be propped up. But then I wanted to use the plaster as well as a sort of um, grout and dust and dirt between the tiles, obscuring areas uh, of the road and just showing that there's been some destruction in this town. I think sometimes when you get um, when you've got figures and you want to make an elaborate diorama, um, I've done a couple recently with building ruins and trenches and sandbags, and um, that, that's fair enough. But when you've got a nice tank, I don't think you need a lot as a background to it as a setting, even just a patch of grass or a patch of mud. Um, I could have left the house out and just done did done the whole um, base covered in these slates as though the tank was on a kind of village a village square um, because you know, like I say the, the Cromwell's got loads of detail on it uh, you don't want to detract from that
and then when the plaster's uh, started to dry or partly dry, I got a wet paintbrush and kind of scrubbed off some of it to show again the um, the cobbles underneath. Um, You know, as the plaster's drying, you can you can wash it off here and there where you don't want to. But I didn't put any on the building apart from where there's rubble and dirt at the bottom of the base of the building. Um, <clears throat> I didn't need to do like a render on it. Maybe if it was a piece of card and it looks a bit plain. I've just used um, Vallejo's pin wash there, black pin wash acrylic, um, to darken the road. I had used two separate greys, one one uh, tone of grey for the road and one for the building, so it didn't look too similar, but um, I've just darkened it a little bit there, and then I'm taking, I'm taking it back a little bit with the tissue. wetting it, diluting it and um, drawing it into the, the plaster as well so it just kind of uh, looks more realistic and it's not just plaster just whacked on top of uh, <clears throat> another surface. I like to work in this way with, with washes, with really diluted paint and just build it up bit by bit, um, trying to get a realistic finish. I'm going to do it on the house as well, do, do uh, some black acrylic and then draw it down. It's Tamiya Rubber Black and um, just draw it down with some water and um, I put some more on before the end as well. Just trying to get the burnt, burnt building effect. I 
So in the plaster I've put some pre-cut little blocks and bricks and chunks of stone and they're just uh, from the um, high density polystyrene, the blue foam, uh, just off cuts that I slice up into blocks. Um, not necessarily from the from the facade of the building that's that's there, but uh, just that's just been pushed uh, off the road to allow vehicles through. Uh, just general rubble. And then I've got Vallejo's um, ochre sand kind of effect, and I'm just going over the plaster um, just to give it a bit more realism, a bit of a dirty colour instead of a plaster colour. I like Vallejo's uh, dirt and mud effects. Um, if you really dilute them, then you get a kind of wash that just kind of clings to the to the uh, the gaps and the grooves between things. And if you use it thick, you get like a thick paste, um, like granules of mud on the surface. Um, so I wanted to use it on this as well. But I've been using it a lot recently on the tanks. Yeah, the next one's a KV-1. And I think I might include um, one of my old German tanks in the diorama. Uh, covered in snow or burnt out, I've not decided. Um, I think the KV-1 was just used at the, in the first couple of years of the war. Uh, actually, the first year, the first year for, for uh, Russia anyway and uh, against the Finns and um, against the Germans just for a short time before it was declared obsolete. But I've got a Panther tank that I wanted to use in the diorama, but I think uh, that they didn't exist at the same time on the battlefield. I'll have to look into that though. But um, I've also got a Panzer three that I could have uh, buried in the snow. Um, but yeah, the KV-2 is a trumpeter model. That's that's quite a nice model to build. I'm about a, a quarter of the way through it when I broke off to make this diorama uh, during the weekend. So yeah, more Tamiya rubber black there. Um, dark on the building. But um, yeah, that's more or less it, guys. It was just an experiment to see about doing the doing the cobbled road and it was a lot quicker and easier than I anticipated it would be when I switched the camera on. Um, so just a quick one and uh, I'm pleased with the effect. Um, I think I saved myself a lot of time there using the uh, using the, the wire mesh as a, as a kind of stencil. So thanks for watching. Uh, a couple of pictures and a couple more pictures on my Instagram as usual. Uh, thumbs up guys and um, subscribe if you like to see more stuff like this and um, thanks for your support.